Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Minecraft and as usual we're playing the Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack and you're joining me at the moment in the basement level of my um, of my wizard's tower which um, looking around it's kind of earthy and I feel like I need to do some upgrades to the architecture around here at some point but the reason I've come here is not to talk about the architecture but because the first thing I did in the last stream was add in some extra elevators so now there's, there's one of these down here which brings you up to the ground floor I say ground floor it's it's, it's an elevated ground floor, but never mind. Then we can go up a couple more times, and that brings us to the workshop level of the um, of, of the tower. And then finally, I put in another one that brings you all the way up onto the onto the growing level as well, because there was I found it was getting it was getting frustrating coming up to here and then having to run over run over there to go up the steps, or to get down to here and then have to use this staircase like a peasant, or come in through the through the entrances I've poked in at the bottom here and then not have to go up the stairs and so on. So it's now much easier because you can just go all the all the way straight up like that. <clears throat> so that was a minor thing that I did to open the episode up. Um, but after that, one of the big thing we've done, and the reason I'm in creative mode, as you can clearly tell by the way I'm flying around at the moment, and by the fact I've got weird stuff in my inventory, the big thing we did was go down to the um, the portal room down here, and we've added in as well as the as well as the nether portal over here. We now also have a portal to the end. So this has been our big thing for. Um, for this episode is putting in this new portal and then going through and having a look around on the other side and that non sort of non scrolling effect still weirds me out a little bit on that with that um, background there so the, the 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 run started off with us having a bit of a sort of um, a debate and um, the, the sort of the, the parental figures of the server telling us all the things we need to make sure we've got like make sure you've packed some clean armor and you've got a good supply of fruit and all of that sort of stuff before you go through there because apparently it was going to be a bit dramatic on the other side please nobody hit generate. anybody else into the void when we go through there for the first time because whilst it'll be hilarious it'll also be a major bullish <laughs> <laughs> so then we said once we decided we were all ready we came down here and took the plunge now things didn't go quite as we'd hoped um Basically, no sooner did I arrive than I more or less, almost immediately, got nudged off the edge. Now we've we've had a bit of a debate and a passing of blame about this, and we eventually decided that it was probably due to um, uh, due to the too many of us being crowded in the same place and me not crouching. So I eventually got nudged off the edge and fell an infinitely long distance. And this was this was rather upsetting for a couple of reasons. Um, one was because Basically, as soon as I arrived here, I died through what felt like no fault of my own. Uh, but more importantly, um, we then got—I then got um, stuck. Uh, then, yeah. But more importantly, because I died from a massive fall down there, my grave had ended up down there as well. So when I came back, I had to find a way to get down there, and that's why there's a waterfall here. Not this particular one, but I added another waterfall. I think it was off the ed edge of this bit here. Um, and that was a way to get down and get back up again to investigate the grave. Sadly, the grave was not as full as I would have hoped, and quite a lot of my stuff was missing. So, I've got a few few, a few things that I need to, need to need to replace once I get back into the um, into the game properly and, and and start thinking about those sort of things. So then we came up up the um, we built we built a bridge out and then kept a staircase up and, and emerged on the top of this this area uh, where there was an Ender Dragon which we needed to fight and also hordes and hordes of Endermen. So there was a little bit of a debate and uh, um, Mike suggested putting a pumpkin on your head so that the Endermen wouldn't notice that you were looking at them. And it turns out he wasn't making that up. That actually is a thing that worked. So um, after a long debate over whether he was whether he was trolling us or not, a couple of us put pumpkins on our heads and came over here with a slightly restricted vision. You that you're seeing here after that there was a, a general scaling of these towers using uh, massive nerd poles I, I imagine or possibly slime slings um, to destroy the crystals that were on the top of them because apparently that gives the um, that's how the ender dragon gets its power and once that was done we were able to take endless pot shots at it with our uh, with our bows and arrows and, until eventually we were able to defeat defeat it I think the killing blow was actually applied by it from with a um, uh, with a sword because that's how these things apparently work once that was done, we were then able to find a portal off to some other part of the end. Let's see if I can actually get some ender pearls. And then we had to find a place of teleporting, which I I can't remember for certain. It looks like I suspect it was this thing over here. Yes, this looks familiar. So we came over here and it turns out if you chuck an ender pearl in here, you get teleported off to this place. 
And here, this is a... I don't even know how to describe it really. It's it's part of the end. It's an enormous area made up of this um, end stone, populated by end men and probably ender ice and ender fruit and ender wigan and no chorus. Sorry, these are chorus plants and chorus fruits. Now these are interesting because when you these are nice and easy to harvest because you pop one of the bottom bricks and the whole thing collapses and scatters fruit everywhere which you can then pick up so that was um interesting so we were never short of food however teleportation seems to be the the, the thing in the end so everything teleports you endermen will teleport around they'll teleport you if they touch you some some of them will anyway if you eat the end of end fruit and so the chorus fruit you, you teleport and and much more besides it's also got this sort of weird floating island layout thing going on so it's a uh, it's it's interesting to explore should we say but we uh but we persevered mostly through the construction of large bridges like this which are uh, great fun to run across um and then trying to work out if i'm going the right way i think it was more north that we headed let's try not to fall out of the sky not it matters because as, as mentioned i am in creative mode because this would be a lot slower and more tortuous and either you'd be seeing through a pumpkin's a pumpkin's eye holes or there'd be an endless stream of endermen chasing me if i was doing this in real in in, in on on live so i'm i'm, I'm going to uh, i'm going to take the the, uh, the easy way out here we did a bit of exploration built up a few more of these bridges to come all the way over here and we could have used the slime sling and ender pearl throwing a bit to teleport around and jump and that sort of thing but I'm very nervous about lag in this game because some, every so often, when, I, when I've been slime slinging around on the uh, normally on the server, every so often there'll be a tiny glitch of lag, and you'll just fall out of the sky wherever you are if you're using the slime sling, and that's problematic, shall we say? It's annoying at the best of times, but if you're trying to fly across the world and the world mostly consists of these bottomless voids, then I can see it being a bit more deadly, and so I was trying to avoid that sort of. Um, that sort of doom. Eventually, we found a couple of these. Um, these apparently are our ender cities. So we've used the, again using the slime sling. We bounced around them a bit and, um, and explored the place. So these are um, they're sort of building y, I guess. And then you've got these awkward staircases that are made significantly. Oh, is that a? Maybe not. Um, yeah, the, the awkward staircases that are made significantly easier by the slime sling. <laughs> and so we explored around here. We found various um, shulkers, which are important, because if you nick their shells, or you kill them and take their shells, then you can turn them into shulker boxes. And I lost one of those in the um, in, in, in the Twilight Forest a while back, and that was annoying. Um, and so we, we um, everyone's always wanted to have more of those around, so it's been tricky. Oh, here's one. Here's one we didn't kill. So this is a shulker box. And these things, when you're not in creative mode, they will sometimes open up like that, um, at which point they're apparently vulnerable, and they release mini little things that fly around, and whenever they touch you, it's like you've had that um, that drink from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and you just start to float upwards, your gravity gets re reversed. Now, this wasn't too much of a danger to us, because we all have, uh, there's another one, because uh, we all have slime slings, and so, uh, sorry, slime boots, so falling a long way and then and going bounce or splat doesn't actually bother us, but I can see how if you're playing with slightly more vanilla equipment, that'd be a little bit scarier. There are also these flying boats, so again we built out a bridge out to have, have a look at and loot this one. Um, again it was inhabited by shulkers. I don't think there was anything else particularly valuable on here, although no doubt somebody will tell me if I'm wrong. But we had a good look around it and went and went up onto the crow's nest and went, oh look, look I, can see, I can see their house from up here. So it was an interesting area to have a play around in, oop, I've fallen out of the sky, and have, have a look around. So, so we, we did that. From here, we harvested a load of stuff, mostly enormous numbers of um, en ender pearls and some of the uh, chorus fruit and some samples of the rock as well, and brought it all uh, and brought it all back with us, along with sort of dragon's eggs and ender tears and various other such s stuff like that. So it was it was an interesting place to come to. I'm not sure I'd um, I'm not sure I'd come here on holiday again, but it was it, it made it made a change of scenery and um, getting spotted by the endermen every so often was a bit of a a bit of a pain in the wasp name but eventually we ended up back but after much exploration and uh, shenaniganery we finally ended up back in our own in our, in our home dimension and started to sort all the stuff out and decide what else we wanted to do with the uh, with the session once back in the real world there are a few more things we thought we'd get done while the um while, while, while the stream was running but most of this was sort of tidying up and just sort of rebuilding stocks of things that we'd filled up or used up or whatever so i spent a certain amount of time making a um making myself a new backpack to replace the one that had been lost in the uh, in in the end 
And that took quite a lot of steps because let's because well let's have let's have a look at backpacks, shall we? I, I I wanted to make a rare one because this was this is a decent size and if I'm and it saves me having to carry a shulker box around as well, so fewer things to worry about. But this required an enormous quantity of leather, which and quite a lot of gold as well. Interestingly, a gold chest is made up of an iron chest plus a load of gold, and an iron chest is made up of a wooden chest plus a load of iron. So this is quite an expensive thing to build, but we have enough. We have the resources around. that was able to make that. Um, but it also requires an uncommon backpack as well, and that's an enormous quantity of leather as well, and a load of iron and another iron chest. So um, make, requires an, and a, and a common backpack, and the common backpack is another chest and a load of leather and so on. So actually, the um, the, the hardest part about the hardest part of making all of this was getting enough leather together. Um, and we did event. I did eventually manage it. Um, I, I, it. It turns out you can. Um, where is it? You can cook. Oh yes, here we go. You can cook prepared flesh into into leather, and you can make prepared flesh by putting four pieces of rotten flesh together. So I did that. Strip ripped through all of our supplies of rotten flesh, making making them four into one into into the prepared flesh. And then I discovered that you can also make. Um, it make leather through through magic yes you can turn rotten flesh directly into leather using a manor infusing pool however that requires an alchemy alchemical catalyst which we don't have yet but then it also turns out that you can do it in the blood infuser you can turn rotten flesh directly into leather using the problem with what in, in a blood infuser that has a promise of tenacity now this is something we have so if i'd realized that before i turned all this rotten flesh into leather then this would have got us four times as much so in the future I shall try and remember to do it this way. This is this is a massive, massive saving. Um, it just costs a even quite a small amount of blood to do it. So yes, next time <laughs> we shall try and do it this way, and this will be much, much better. However, we do seem to have a reasonable supply of um, of rotten flesh from people just going around and killing zombies. So I think that'll be replenished fairly quickly, and then I'll make a load of this into leather next time we play. So I was able to I was able to make that backpack. I still haven't replaced my. Um, my portable crafting table thing, because that got lost as well. And the, the grenades I got from handing in one of the quests last time that I thought I'd take with me because they seemed useful. Again, those have gone too, but eh, never mind. There's nothing too, nothing too irreplaceable in there. Mike stole a lot of, um, well, took a, used a load of the other uh, fruit and, and berries that uh, Pete's been growing to make us all smoothies. So that's boosted the number of different things I've eaten by by quite a, quite a few, quite a quite a lot. I extended the soil area up here a little bit, partly because I wanted to have um, have the elevator come up in, into the soil area, but also because I wanted a bit more growing area for the various different types of flowers. So this has expanded a little bit since last time, but as you can see, just looking at it, there's still a long way to go. And the fact that it requires an absolutely enormous amount of, um, of earth is why this has not been finished. So. Eventually we'll get this done, but it's going to be a it's going to be a work in progress for a good long time, I think. And I think that pretty much covers it. I did start looking into um, try, uh, trying to make bigger um, tartaric gems, so I made a fair number of the um, the, 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 the these ones, the uh, the less the lesser ones, which is the second size up. So if we look at, if we look up for tartarics, and everyone thought I was saying tartar sauce and got excited about fish and chips, but that might have been Al's fault for having chips as well. Um, you, you initially you make the petty ones, and they're made out of um, fairly easy to get stuff. Although the blue dye is why I needed more flowers. So otherwise it's just glass, redstone, and gold, which is all pretty easy to come by because well, it's all in the storage facility, which basically means it's easy to come by because somebody else is gathering it for me, which is very kind of them. Then the, I was upgrading a lot into all of them to the lesser Tartaric gem because you can store, instead of being able to store um, 64 will in them, you can store 256 will in them, which is a lot more. And so that seemed like a good thing for people to be carrying around with them. Um, that, however, requires a block of redstone and a diamond, both of which we have in decent quantities, and also a lapis block. And the lapis block is made out of a large number of um, lapis plates. So... Um, that's a fact in a factorizer alternatively in a blacksmith's workshop you make all these lapis plates and turn them into a block so i was gathering enormous quantities of lapis and putting it through the compactor in order to get the plates in order to make these blocks and then having to go off and get these things repaired and get more methane gas and it was just a big sort of circle and process as these things often are but that did allow me to then make the um make the uh the large tartaric gem the the, the next size up of tartaric gems i was looking at the one above that as well 
uh, the common yes the common tartaric gem but that that then that looked reasonably it looked okay I mean, a block of gold and another diamond the block of gold is expensive but it's but it's manageable it's just lots of it's just lots of gold and we and we we have lots of gold it, it is a thing we we can do um gone too far but it also requires these imbued slates and an imbued slate is made in a blood altar from a reinforced slate block a slate block is made from four reinforced slates and a reinforced slate is made from a blank slate block in a blood altar and a blank slate block is made from four blank slates which is made from a compressed stone in a um, in, in, in the blood infuser in the blood altar sorry now the problem with it this, this is all fine so we got to start on that and this this is one where you have to hurt yourself to uh, to fill it up so we had a couple of us stand now i think we had myself tristan and mike all standing by the um by the blood altar taking turns to poke ourselves in the finger with a knife in order to fill it up a bit without killing ourselves and and that worked for the first stage we got the uh, the blank slates together i made a blank slate block but it turns out that in order to make it into a reinforced slate, you need a tier two blood altar, and that is something I haven't got yet, and I don't know. How, I don't actually know how to make that yet. It's probably going to be in the quest lines, but that probably means it probably means it's hidden behind the compressed diamond that we can't make yet, um, or it may, um, or maybe just hidden behind some knowledge that I don't have. And then to make the reinforced, then to make the reinforced slate block into the imbued slate, you need a tier three blood altar. So I'm going to need to do a bit of expansion or improvement of the blood altar in order to get that up a little bit. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. That's going to be a thing to look at in in, in the future to get to, uh, to get these to get these bigger gems. And the theory is that whilst they're probably not going to be very easy to make in large quantities, at least then I'll be able to dump all of the will from the lesser gems that people bring back into the into the common gem, just as something to s store it in, and then. When I get and then down in the um, in the dark magic dungeon, I can keep that large gem in here instead of the instead of the lesser one, sort of the, well, the common one, the, the what is this? This is tier one, tier two, tier three out of, out of five. So I can keep the tier three one in here and use that to um, to store the will that's being used by the Hellfire Forge, and then just top it up from the one that everyone else is bringing back in from time to time. Speaking of bringing the gems back in from time to time, that's what this um, chest up here is for. There's a stock of, of empty ones for, them, for everyone else to pick up, and then they can drop off the full ones when they've killed enough stuff to fill them, good to fill them up completely. So that gives them, that gives a sort of a, um, hopefully it's going to give me an endless source of will as people are going around filling them up for me, and uh, we'll see. I mean, that's already worked with the uh, the blood bank. That's got up to, um, well, this that one is is completely full at 224 buckets. This one is um, about a third full at nearly 8,000 buckets, 80,000 buckets. So the blood is the blood seems to be working as a um, as a renewable resource. So I'm happy happy with that. And that's I think is going to be it. Al might Al will probably be releasing a video as well. He's going to have a a, a different outlook on the um, on 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 our, our journey to the end because he knows a bit more about the game than I do. So his his might be a bit more knowledgeable and a bit less panicky we'll, we'll see see how that goes oh and one thing while i remember it it turns out pete is a wannabe russian oligarch so he's been building himself a um, a super yacht over here uh, so well, let's go and have a quick look at that before i leave because well it's, it's there and that's what things are for now there's this long um bridge out to reach it but then from here you can't actually get onto the boat because this gap is too small and this isn't a door um so that's an interesting jetty not not the most effective jetty i've ever seen but never mind i'm intrigued to find out how pete is going to sail his yacht around it looks a little bit stationary but that might be because it's mostly made of concrete so it's not going to go very far but it um looks quite nice it's got a swimming pool on the back of it here it's got um, a carpeted section down here with some cabins and the cabins have beds in them they do indeed so that, how luxurious this looks like it should be a shower but is actually just a couple of storage crates maybe it's maybe it's more like a wardrobe so maybe this was because he, he saw um, Mike's giant house thing um, which Mike is, insists on calling a starter house and got a little bit jealous and wanted to build his own own um, area so we've got this uh, gargantuan um, yacht lurking just off the off the sh offshore and I have to admit it feel it looks a little bit odd with the um, with the wizard's tower in the um, over here in the background or the foreground depending on which side you look at it from but it adds in some variety I suppose there's also a mysterious building down here which um, is 
looks looks a rather different style style to the rest of them. It's very much more bunkery, and it has a sign over the top saying "No Entry Work in Progress." So. I think we'll leave that one alone for now and maybe we'll find out what's in there in a future episode. So there's an incentive to come along for the stream or for the future catch up videos and you'll um, you'll get to see what goes on in the uh, in the work in progress. Mike has also made himself a rose garden because well why not? Um yeah, why not? Uh, his his house is expanding gradually and uh, gaining dec more dec more and more decorations. So maybe we'll have another tour of that in another video. So that's everything I have for you today. Um, don't forget to come along to the streams on Monday if you want to see us building everything in real time and going off and having adventures in the end. Which, well, I, might, I probably won't go. But we probably won't go back there again for a little while because we've sort of been there and done that and got some of the resources. Um, so we, we'll end up going back there again when we need more resources from it, probably. So in, in, the, in the next episode, I'm going to carry on with doing doing some more of the, the old magic quest line, um, which we probably won't be able to see. Oh, maybe we can. Yes, we can see it, even though I'm in creative mode. So yeah, I'll carry on with this one. This is what I was planning to do in the um, in the last ep in the last uh, session, but other things like going to the end kind of uh, distracted me from it. So there's more, plenty more stuff to do here, which I'll get on with. And Wednesdays will be the Factorio streams. Uh, those are going well. I'm um, I'm doing fairly advanced stuff at the moment with the deep space science, but there's still a long way to go because, but largely because harvesting and and processing sufficient naquitite is being a, a bit of a mission at the moment, should we say? We've got these wake up, wake up catch up videos at the weekend, and as much as possible, I'll be releasing the GTA videos on Thursday and maybe other things on um, Tuesdays or Fridays. We'll see how that goes. Next week, I should probably say, is going to be a bit quieter on the old video front because I'm going to be I'm not going to be around. I'm going to be away on holiday, so there won't be any streams, and there pr may or may not be videos. We'll see how see how things go. Um, but I hope you'll forgive me for that and join me the week after when everything will return to normal and um, we'll have hopefully have lots and lots of videos again. So thank you for watching. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time and uh, yeah, see you then.